It's been a wonderful month of January already as we look at building greatness in 2024, at really being faithful 24-7. Seven weeks of faithfulness in 2024 is our goal. It's our challenge. Hopefully you're sticking with that. It is looking at different disciplines that help us build into greatness, really doing something for God's kingdom, for his purpose, that will leave a legacy and also build an eternal uh, foundation of who you are with God in Christ this year throughout the entire year. And our goal is to build something great. Our goal is to build a life that is faithful 24-7. We celebrate God's faithfulness. We know that God is good all the time and all the time God is good that he's faithful, it is our goal as a church family to really spur one another on to us being and living a faithful life 24-7. And I think when we're building something great, we love to watch every process. I watched, was able to watch this building go up starting in August of 2015 and we opened the building in October of 16 and we saw every process of this building. In fact, I have pictures about once a week standing right here before there was a stage, Matt would go upstairs and take a picture for for about a year, me standing right here watching this building go up. But interestingly enough, we got dried in the second week of April in 2016. Dried in, if you're unfamiliar with that term, it means the roof is up, the windows, the, the, the rain could come and it wouldn't hurt the inside of the building. It's called dried in. And then if you remember your history in Houston weather, our our wonderful weather here, we had what was called the tax day flood in 2016, the, the week after we were dried in. And the floods came and it devastated our city and there were some things, but I remember the day after the flood, walking this building with the superintendent of our building project, his name is Richard, I said, Richard, isn't this great? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, great, how is the flood great? I said, before you placed a single piece of sheetrock up, Before you were having to get too far along in the process, your building was tested. Your roof, your walls, everything, you know that it's leak proof before you ever destroyed anything else. This flood helped validate the structure that you're building. It helped give us the confidence that this building will stand the storms of life. And he looked at me from going, man, you're crazy to, you know what, I think you're right. And we walked the building with confidence, looking around, making sure that the foundation, the walls, everything was great. And it was. And so when we think about building greatness into our lives, really being faithful, men and women and followers of Christ, we need to understand that the storms really prove that we have a foundation that will last. And so as we are looking at building a faithful 24-7 life, We need to understand that every one of those spiritual disciplines are tools that we can use to build that faithfulness, that worship, that prayer, that Bible study. The Bible study is what our focus is this week, and it works perfectly with the building theme of the parable that we're going to discuss in just a moment. But I want us to understand that the key to us building a faithful 24-7 life is knowing, studying, reading God's Word. If you're going to build greatness, you need to understand that God is the architect. He gave you life. He created life. He is the one to tell you the absolute best design for your life and mine. And if, God's, if God is the architect, God's word is the blueprint. This is the blueprint for our lives. When we need to understand how to respond, how to react, how to talk, how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a parent, how to be, a, how to be whatever it is. This is the blueprint. This is what we read, what we study, what we understand. We cannot build a life of of eternal greatness without understanding and knowing the blueprint that God has for each one of us. Now, when we think about the Bible, if you're new to this Christian journey, it is difficult to understand. It, It sometimes throws you for a loop or has something that's puzzling. Keep studying, keep reading. God's word is difficult to understand. Keep studying, keep reading. God's word sometimes has things that I don't understand. I've been reading it for decades. Keep reading, keep studying. 
That is our goal. It is the truth of God that will give us life, give us direction, give us purpose, give us hope, and give us what we need to endure the storms of life. So keep reading, keep studying. There are two different types of reading God's word. There's devotional reading, and then there's actual Bible study. Devotional reading is when you're just flying through the Bible. You're looking at it from kind of a, a, a high-end view, getting the broad perspective of what God, God's word says. My devotional reading in 2024 is I'm reading through the Bible chronologically. Genesis to Revelation in the, the year, I'm not really diving in, looking to the depths and the understanding of God's word. I'm just getting the, the broad view of what God's word says. That's my devotional reading. That's important. If you're a Christ follower, you need to build into your life devotional reading. But then there's something that is a little bit deeper called Bible study. It is looking at God's word in depth and trying to not only understand what it says, but how it best applies to our lives today. Bible study is a key to understanding what God has for each one of us. If we're gonna live obediently, we first must understand what God's word says. It's going to fit perfectly with the parable that we're gonna study in just a moment. But I want us to understand that we have tools to help us understand God's word because it is difficult to understand. There are things in there that we go, man, I just, I don't get that. I don't understand it. What was the author intending? That's why we offer Bible study classes. That's why you need to be a, in a, a part of one of our adult or youth Bible study classes. Because what we do is we take a passage of scripture. We dive deep into the understanding and the truth of that scripture. And we apply that to where we are and how we live it out. Bible study is offered for all ages and stages. It is a group of like-minded people, same age or stage of life, that have questions, that have frustrations, that have difficulties. And when you get involved with a group of people and you start studying God's word, I promise you through the Holy Spirit, through the help of teachers, through commentaries, you will have a deeper and a greater understanding of what God's word says. Keep reading, keep studying. If you're going to be faithful 24 seven, Bible study, understanding God's word is imperative. It is vital to you building something that is gonna bring God glory. It is a key to us being faithful 24 seven. Now, the greatest sermon ever preached, hopefully I have your attention, it's not what I'm about to do. It's what Jesus did in Matthew chapter five, six, and seven. It is called the Sermon on the Mount, greatest sermon ever preached. And the greatest sermon ever preached had a, a tremendous conclusion that allowed Jesus to wrap up, to tie up everything that he had said to that crowd with really the in-action application. And our parable this morning is found in Matthew chapter seven. If you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter seven. But as you're opening, let me just explain. Jesus basically says that everything that you need, all of the spiritual disciplines, all of the understanding, all the keys to life, to building faithfulness is in this sermon. Loving others, how to be a great husband, how to, how to have a prayer life that is on point, how to fast, how to serve, how to go the extra mile, how to forgive, all included in this tremendous sermon. And so when we look at this passage, we need to understand that Jesus is concluding the greatest sermon ever preached with the greatest application ever given. And this is what it says, Matthew chapter seven, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell. And great was its fall, was its destruction. This is the tale of two foundations. This is Jesus differentiating between a wise man and a foolish man. 
a wise follower and a foolish follower. This is Jesus saying that everything that I just told you, all of the truth that I just, just laid down a foundation for you, this is how you act on it. This is how you take what you hear and you become a wise man or a wise woman. This is how you build a life faithful 24 seven. This is how you daily incorporate the spiritual disciplines and grow into be the man of God or the woman of God that he's created you to be. This is the conclusion. This is the application to the greatest sermon ever preached. It is about two types of people, two types of foundations. Let's look at the passage a little closer to, together. The first thing that it says is it says, therefore, and anytime, remember, anytime we see the word therefore, we always wanna ask what the therefore is there for. He is tying in everything that I said. All of these action points, how to love, how to forgive, how, how to look, how to pray, how to fast, how to serve, how to give, all of these things are gonna be concluded by this one parable, the, the comparison between two foundations. And then he says, and I really want us to understand this as we look at the Greek, you may not be a Greek scholar, but everyone who hears these words of mine, this is continues to hear. It is in the present tense, which is best described as everyone who continues to hear these words of mine, everyone who continues to read, everyone who continues to study. It is not enough just to hear it one time and think, man, I've got it. Jesus is telling his followers, I know I just preached this sermon, review it, talk about it, discuss it, go back and, and, and just chew on these truths time and time again. We need to be constant readers, consistent readers of God's word. It is not enough to read God's word one time and go, okay, I got it, I understand it. In fact, if you dive in and read it deeper and deeper time and time again, God will reveal truths. Nothing's new under the sun, but he will reveal new truths to us as we dive deeper and deeper into God's word. Continual, if, if you've ever watched a movie that is your favorite movie and maybe you've seen it 20 times, I always find it fascinating when someone watch, watches a movie like a fourth and fifth time and they discover something they didn't see the first three or four times. God's word is so much deeper, so much more full of meaning than any movie you could ever watch. So when you read it and you commit to continually reading God's word, it is amazing how your eyes will open up and it will allow you to do what Jesus is telling us to do. What is that? It's another word that's in the present tense that tells us that what we need to do is to continue to act these words of mine and act on them. Act on what? Act on the truth found in God's word. When we continually act, continually apply, when we are continually obedient to what God tells us, he says, you are like a wise man who builds his house on a rock, on the foundation that is solid, that will not be shaken. It is not just simply someone who hears the word, it's hears the word and acts on them. When we think about the comparison between these two, these two men, these two builders, the building isn't hearing God's word, it is acting on it. And then he says the, the result there, the rains fell, the floods came. We got rains, we have floods, we have winds, and they slammed very violently against the house. And it was, did not fall. That's the result. And then you have the other builder. Everyone who hears these words, remember it's a continual hears of mine and does not act on them. This is really to disobey. This is to, to hear God's word and not to obey it. He is a foolish man. And, his, it, and basically the end right there is destruction. And great was its fall. When you think about the difference, Jesus isn't talking about an atheist or an agnostic or someone who never walks into church. He's not says, he didn't say the wise man goes to church and the foolish man doesn't. The wise man believes in God and the foolish person does not. No, he says both actually hear. Both know. Both may even trust and believe the words that he just preached, the words that are written in Scripture. 
both the difference is huge. And the difference is we have wise and foolish people in this room right now. You think, well, man, Stephen, we got up and we're here at church. That must make us wise. Not according to Jesus's parable. In fact, there is a difference right here. Both of these builders, two builders, they both hear and they both know. But something makes one go up and have a solid foundation and one go down. And it is the fact that one acts and one ignores. You want to know the difference between this wise builder and this fool? Is the fact that one acts and one ignores. One obeys and one disobeys. So it is very likely that we have men and women, students in this room who know God's word, they hear God's word, they even continually hear God's word, and yet they do not act. They disobey, they know God's blueprints, they know God's plan, and they know that it's even best, but they go, you know what, I think I'm gonna do it my own way. And every time I see that, every time I see someone who is in church, in Bible study, studying the word of God, knows God's word, hears God's word, understands God's word, and says, you know what, I think I'm gonna do it my own way. I always have to ask the question, why? Why do you think that that man, that woman, that student hears the truth, even trusts in God and says, you know what, I've got this. Maybe it's pride, maybe it's the fact that you wanna do it your way. You know God's way is best, but you know what, God, I've got this. Maybe it's just the fact that it's convenient. Maybe you're choosing a road of disobedience because it's convenient for you. Maybe it's because choosing God's path, following his blueprints, it's difficult. It's sometimes tedious. It's hard. Sometimes it comes with with all kinds of scrutiny and maybe even frustration. Maybe even the fact that people are going to persecute you because you stand for truth if you obediently follow God's plan. So you know what you say? Just not worth it. I know your plan, I know that it's truth, I know that it's best, but God, it's just not worth it. Or maybe it's the fact that you're just enjoying being disobedient. Maybe you're walking down a path and it's it's a sinful path and you know it's not what God wants for you, it's not the best plan for you, but you go, you know what, I'm enjoying the sin more than I'm really worried about the, the consequence of that sin. Either way, if you know God's word, and he's telling you to go this path and you choose another path, you are a foolish person and destruction is waiting. Because you know what happens? In both scenarios, in both cases, we look at this, we have both here, one acts, one ignores, but here's what happens for both. Rains, winds, storms. I want us that are, gonna pursue Christ and we're gonna be obedient. We're gonna say, you know what, God, I wanna be a wise builder. I wanna build on the rock and the foundation. I don't want you to buy into to some of the false gospels that are pre- being preached in our culture. If you are obedient and you are faithful and you are wise, it does not mean that life is gonna be easy. It does not mean that storms won't come, that consequences, that difficulties in your life won't happen. In fact, Jesus tells this parable, he gives this conclusion, and he says, the wise man, storms came. The foolish man, storms came. The same storms that destroyed the foolish man's house beat and struck and blew against the wise man. So how much more of a reason for us as Christ followers to pursue righteousness, to pursue obedience, to pursue a foundation built on acknowledging God's word and acting on it in obedience because the storms will come. The rains are gonna come, the winds are gonna blow and it's gonna crash. The difference in these two, and instead of all these words, we just have a nice little icon of storms, is this person stands and there is destruction here. And when you see that, You have protection and destruction, wise and foolish. When we think about the difference between a protected house and a destroyed house, the difference isn't knowing God's word, 
both knew it. It is whether or not you want to be a doer of God's word, whether or not you want to be obediently following the plan of Christ. Jesus says, here are all these things that we need to do. I'm elevating. You've heard that it was said, do not murder. I tell you to love your enemy and pray for them. You've heard it said, don't divorce. I, I tell you, do not look at a woman lustfully. And when you pray, this is how you pray. And when you fast, this is how you fast. And when you give, this is how you give. All of these things, all of these specifics that you need to incorporate into your daily life. Here is the conclusion. You can either do it and be wise and stand with protection. Or you can ignore it and you can be foolish and you can experience destruction. God has given us a blueprint. And he says this blueprint is the absolute best plan and purpose and path for your life. Stick to the blueprint. But so many times we go, you know what, I hear you, God, but I think I'm going to do it my way. I hear you, God, but man, it's difficult to be obedient when the culture is so loud and just so consistent with just pounding a message in my mind that is contrary to your blueprint. And I think I'm just going to go with the culture. I think I'm going to go with what's convenient and what's easy. God says, if you are wise, you will do what I've told you to do. You will live the way that I've, that I've laid out for you. And you will act in obedience to follow every aspect of my blueprints. You will live the life that I've called you to live. You know what the first step to acting in obedience it's knowing God's word. It's understanding what he has. You have to study the blueprints. Bible study, in-depth knowledge and learning and study of God's word is a huge step, but it's not enough. If you know God's word, if you've memorized it from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, but you never apply it, you never do it, you never live it, you never obediently act on God's truth, then you are like a foolish builder who builds a great house, beautiful on the outside, amazing on the inside, but the foundation is sand. And when the storms come, that beautiful building will be destroyed. Build on the rock, on the foundation of obedience in Christ. If, if really you wanna build greatness in 2024, a life built on greatness, God is your architect. The Bible, the word of God is your blueprint. And obedience, that is the foundation. And any builder will tell you that the, the most important step is laying the proper foundation. Because the foundation upon which everything else is built has to stand the storms of life. And as you build other things into your life and as we look at these spiritual disciplines in weeks to come like serving and praying and giving and, and, and worship, all of those things have to be built on a knowledge and an obedience to God's word, his truth, his understanding. James tells us this and it's a great passage to put to memory. James 1.22 says, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Then he goes on to give an illustration of someone who looks in the mirror and totally forgets what they look like. is like someone who hears God's word and walks away and does not do it. We are called to not simply know the word of God, to understand the word of God, but to be active doers of the word of God. And when that happens, you will build, you will pour a foundation of one that will stand the storms and the tests of life. It is an amazing thing to stand through a storm. It is an amazing thing to have a foundation that you don't even understand, but that stays solid in the storms of life. 2023, Overall, when we look at it, the bailiffs, we celebrated a tremendous year of God's blessings and his goodness and his faithfulness. But some of you know 2023 was not without maybe the greatest storm that we've ever faced. 
the Thursday before Easter, kind of an important day in the life of the, our family, my brother, my only brother, did the unimaginable. I have a hard time thinking and especially speaking about what he did. He not only took his own life, but he took the life of someone else. It was a storm. It was crashing against our lives. And as we walked through that, the pain was real, the suffering was real, the mourning was real, but the foundation was solid of who Christ is, how much he loves us, his great plan for us, and his amazing strength that he provided through that time. I would have never chosen that storm. I didn't get to prepare for that storm. We lost my mom in 2021. She had some health issues. That was a slow roll of, hey, there's a storm coming. I think we better prepare for that. There was time. There was not time to prepare for the unspeakable act that my brother did. But my life, not in perfection, but in faithful obedience to knowing God's word, studying God's word, and more importantly, living God's word out every day. Maybe not understanding why God wanted to take me through that, but trusting that his blueprints, they're real. And I can tell you, the pain was real, but the foundation was firm. And I can remember standing outside the house that night, family gathered around, Tiffany's saying, this isn't who we are. This isn't our family. We have a foundation in Christ. We have a firm foundation in who he is and how he is, is going to shower us with the protection and the strength and the love and everything we need to walk through this. And it was a storm. And I can testify that when the storms come, your foundation better be real. And that foundation is built on obediently following God's word. That foundation is built on trusting God's plan enough to living God's plan. And living God's plan, expecting the, the rains to come and the winds to blow and the storms to crash down. And when they do, I don't understand why we had to go through that, but I know this. Although I was hurt, my faith was never shaken. My trust in God was never questioned. His love for me never stopped just showering down and, and blessing us, even through the most difficult storms in life. And I can look back, just like I talked to Richard after the tax day flood and say, man, isn't this good? Flood wasn't good. The storm that I endured wasn't good. But God's goodness, his protection, his love, his foundation was so, so good. And so our question today, as we look at building a life that is faithful 24 seven is how is your foundation? Do you know God's word? Are you studying God's word? But more importantly, are you living it out every day? Because I pray that you don't have to face a storm like we did, but there will be storms. There will be winds, there will be rains. And if the foundation isn't on the rock of obediently following Christ's word, then great is the destruction that is coming your way. But if you're a wise builder, and you lay the foundation of obediently following Christ, his blueprints, his plan, then even though the rains come, the storms are gonna come. You will stand and be protected by the grace and the love and the foundation that is Christ in Christ alone.